can't hold our hands. Wait on the set. <laughs> Hello, I'm Laura Kelly, coming to you from LCTV Cape Cod. The show is polkacapecod.org. That stands for Protect Our Cape Cod Aquifer. We're here today talking about waters throughout the Cape and ultimately throughout the world because they're all connected together. I'm the 11th generation born and raised here on the Cape and it's a really big concern for me because water is a source of life. So I'm here today with guest Scott Smith. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. And what is your title and position? I'm Chief Scientist of Water Defense, an organization founded by Mark Ruffalo. And my specific role is, as scientist, I acquire knowledge in a systematic way. And my laboratory is the real world. And that's what like separates that. water defense from any other organization in the world, is that my laboratory is the real world, and we take action and Mark is directly involved, and he's been beneath the bridge at Guanas Canal and goes into contaminated With you, sites. right? With me, absolutely. Yeah, we have a photograph. Yeah, you have a picture of that, too. Yep. Um, so today's topics is going to be a wide range, so bear with us and um, make it to the end. So I wanted to jump right in with the fact that you guys are connecting with our Cape Cod Community College. What are you doing there? Yes, uh, a couple years ago, Cape Cod Community College reached out to me, gave a presentation, and then they uh, started a collaboration project with me to work with new standards and fingerprinting water. Applied for some grants, they got some funding, and then in October, when I met with Mark, uh, Water Defense kind of stepped in, and now we're doing this as Water Defense, so it's, it's very exciting. And so what are your goals for Cape Cod on a whole for Water Defense? Uh, the goals on a whole are to establish baseline water testing nice. for not the whole water column. And let me explain that a little bit. A uh, water column is beneath the surface above the bottom. Okay. And life exists in the water column. And the world for 40, 50 years has been testing, grabbing instantaneous samples from the surface. What That's we, just a quick, correct. like that, right? Correct. Right. We have a technology that gets deployed and submerged in the entire water column, and we track exposure to all chemicals nice. over a certain time period. So we can track chemicals and all oil, cool. all kinds <laughs> of uh, contamination, and what is, is doing in the water column and accumulating. So what have you created? Uh, in Step back to 2010, I was uh, the only person, inventor, that created a technology and a product called Opflex. It's an open-celled material so cool. based on biomimicry. Check this out. And neat, huh? it was the only technology out of 43,000 that BP endorsed and approved in the BP oil spill. And they released a, a cover story in so the you business were down section. There, yeah, huh? yeah, they released a, a detailed cover yeah. story in the USA Today business cover section in November of 2010. So roll forward uh, this water testing is what it's all about on Cape Cod, but it's very important to understand the background. Uh, I'm here because it's an obligation of what I witnessed in the Gulf of Mexico. I was there developing this, helping clean up the spill, and I witnessed the testing with in surface samples when I was, could see the chemicals, and these surface samples Amazing. were coming back saying non-detect and all these chemicals. At that point in time, I'm like, wow, I have two young daughters and all these things you know, I'm relying on water testing. I now have an obligation to educate for the rest of my life. Cool. Responsibility. And that's Glad you that's did. what drove me. Glad you're here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this? Like, what got you to, you know, create this, invent this? Well, I had my own flood disaster with oil contaminated water, literally wiped out the entire company. And I decided instead of walking away to put every last penny in, and we had, you know, all the inventory was wiped out, and we had a material on the corner that we were developing for the medical world, and it was repelling water and absorbing oil. Now that's cool. Say yes. that again. The material was ab this absorbing is, oil and repelling water. This is able to, in an oil spill, actually collect oil and repel water. Correct. So this is called? Opflex. Opflex. And you created it 
um, thinking of bees, is that right? No, biomimicry of the human lungs. The I just lung. learned about bees recently. And basically it's all about surface area. And, at the, and, and it's, uh, it's a very important thing to understand. The polymer I chose, ethylene methylacrylate, and that's as technical as I'm gonna get today. That polymer, <laughs> ethylene methylacrylate, is what is used in IV bags, injection needles to save lives every day. Wow. So as long as we have hospitals and people's in need, people are going to be doing uh, using that. So it's safe, and then it just Great. turns out that it attracts oil and chemicals like a magnet and repels water. That's cool. And this product you can use over and over again? BP reused and recycled at an average of 25 times in the Gulf of Mexico. And so how do you get the oil out? You wring it. You squeeze it and centrifuge it. And I, and I saw a video once of, uh, it's almost like the really old ways to squeeze your laundry. You exactly, get just like the ringers that oh, our great grandmother did. I want to make another very important point about Cape Cod Connections. So I'm a resident of Cape Cod. I work with scientists on Cape Cod. Uh, Congressman Markey, who is now Senator Markey, referenced this material last year on the Mayflower oil spill. More importantly, Cape Cod Community College is about the younger generation, and I'm very proud that one of my interns, Sean Keene, Mass Maritime Cadet, made history when he took the Oplex I donated in a ringer on the uh, TS training ship Kennedy nice. on C term and was ringing out and reusing and recycling very cool. that material. So that's, there's so many Cape Cod connections to what's going on, and we're going to change the entire world with Cape Cod Community College. So that's your mission. Can you tell us your mission, a little bit more about yeah. that? Our, our mission at Water Defense is to set new global standards based on our belief that it is a fundamental human right Excellent. to know what is in your water. And we're going to change the way the world tests the water, and we're going to diagnose the problem. So, our, so just to repeat this, slow down really quick. What they're doing is they're actually Water Defense. They are having Cape Cod be their template they're going to start here, create programs, create ways to test and monitor situations, having it be a template for other parts around the world. Is that correct? That's correct. Oh, how cool. We're so fortunate. We're so lucky. Well, and it's, a, it's a lot more. There is still more that we don't know than we know. That's why the focus is on the college and setting new standards. That's so true. The, what we do know is oil and nonpolar contaminants. Um, and metals and clear, colorless, odorless chemicals that contaminate, just like the recent spill in Charleston, West Virginia, that we can pull those kinds of chemicals out. I don't know, crazy, huh? I'm going to bring out, um, I live here in town, actually, and I went and I got my water tested at two or three different labs. I heard some results uh, that came back, and so... I wanted to just see what the scientist, <laughs> his um, observations are upon reading these. This one is from a lab we have on Cape Cod in Sandwich. And what do you think of my drinking water, Scott? Uh I can't determine anything in your drinking water because you don't know what's in your water from this. This is a limp. I can just, without getting into the details, there, you're not testing for any of the metals. You're not testing for what's called as the semi-volatile. So it's like the semi-volatile. So, semi-volatiles hang around. All you need to know is when you hear semi-volatile, they hang around, they cause cancer, they hang around to invade so your body. So it's vague. So it's, it's vague. hard to detect what's in our drinking water. Here's another test. This is from the lab in Hyannis. And it has, so this is more of that same write-up. It's just vague, right? Uh, yeah, just the, the simple summary on this. Obviously, we could talk about this for three hours, but I'll talk about it in about 30, less than 30 seconds. Uh, this, this is just a testing for volatiles that are problematic with current testing standards, and they escape in the air anyway. So mm. none of what is contaminating the waterways throughout this country in these spills where I have the experience is being tested for, and all these chemicals are on the Cape, and we found them in the water in the Cape. Right. Right. And this is the town of East Ham, and what's going on is dioxane 1.4 has turned up in our drinking water due to the um, transfer station where we would dump all our stuff for decades 
has now got into the water lens, which is moving northwest and shifting as they do. And there's, I'm going to guess, 50, 60 houses that are now have contaminated drinking water, including our elementary school. So this is a quick map of showing which homes are actually uh, don't have drinking water. Would water defense be able to help us out on, on that as well on the Cape? The answer is yes, and here is why. And this is an important answer, and this is why Cape Cod also needs to care about what's happening in the rest of the country. Mayflower, Arkansas, where the spill was a year ago, where we were on the ground. Charleston, West Virginia, and Cape Cod have something called cyclohexane. It's the ring. Cyclohexane. Cyclo cyclohexane. And dioxane, and what spilled in West Virginia, called MCHM. Okay. And also what we uh, cyclohexane that we found in Mayflower yeah. are all similar. All similar. Similar. All in the same. So the answer is yes, uh, and I say yes because we have already shame. proven the efficacy of our water defense environmental indicators and what we're doing to be able to detect this mm -hmm. contaminant. Mm, what a shame. And I actually, uh, you know, Barnstable High School, we, after Cape Cod Community College, uh, where we initially met you, went to Barnstable High School, and, and I actually volunteered with Mark to go to the high school. And we were told the Board of Health wouldn't let us volunteer to go test and figure out what's in the water. I'm still, uh, that offer is still open. So Ooh. anybody watching, that offer is still open. You have my email, just email me. Don't worry, when, when you guys are set up. Are you set up? Are you ready to do this now? We are. Uh, we are ready. We are set up and ready to do the uh, more impacted areas of the Cape that we know about. Uh, we've done some work in the Cancer Cluster in Falmouth. In the Falmouth area. In the Falmouth area, and and obviously any immediate needs, we're doing what we can. We are trying to raise money, and obviously we want to expand this in a in a much broader scale, which involves a significant fundraising, which we're undergoing. But right now, we're focused on um, impact areas where people are suffering. And obviously, people that have cancer and anything to do with children, uh, we need to move on. God, I can't believe this is like, you guys are incredible. I am so excited. We're, we're honored to have water defense here on Cape Cod. Um, you know, I haven't even heard of anybody testing for any of this stuff. And I think most people in the area anyway, locally, know that I've been doing what I can to um, prevent and I'm going to say even lessen the amounts of herbicides used on the Cape, um, fertilizers, uh, nitrogen and phosphorus being the big ones that get out into our, you know, streams and rivers and into our bays. So I'm, you know, doing what I can to work with local Cape Cod commissions and the actual um, selectmen here in town to lessen the amounts of these things. And yet in the meantime, they're still allowed on our shelves. So there's a huge uh, room for education. Would water defense be able to help with that? Uh, educating residents and businesses locally yeah. that they too are impacting their drinking water? Yes, we, I spend a lot of time speaking as does Mark doing presentations in education. Education is the key in arming all people to know what's in their water. And I, I want to make a very important point here. Uh, for those people watching, this is, uh, I've never been more positive with the reception we've received with the younger generation. The kids get it. They are the solution. And, and they it's ask pollution. so many incredible questions. And we are not here to, to panic at anybody at all because we're here to bring people together because if you can't solve a problem unless you diagnose it, and what we're doing at Water Fence, we're gonna diagnose the problem once we know the full gamut and what's really in the water and the contamination, then we can come, I can tailor a solution for each case. So what about herbicides, let's say? Can you explain? Well, yeah, I wanna, we I wanna give you an example. Um, well, first of all, this jar is, Bakken crude oil that was black, and we're you know this just illustrates the water column, and how we go penetrate the entire water column, and you mm -hmm. can see the open cell material this color to absorb the oil, and there's also clear chemicals that that's why you need to go to the test. So I went to a uh, first meeting at uh, at your house, and um, learned that. Glyphosate or Roundup is heavier than water. So this is about a month ago, and we 
put it in the water with the Opflex, and you can see you can see the 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 Opflex is absorbing it. But the interesting thing is here, there's floating there's abs there's floating there's floating things in here like coagulating and moving up the water column. If you see in here, look at that. See these something so something tell, like something is co things. coagulating in here and floating in the water column. And mm -hmm. see see how this I, I think that is a glyphosate reaction. And that is the water. This is why, see if you were taking a surface water sample right now, you wouldn't pick up what is floating in the water column. So I'm illustrating the importance. About a month old, right? Yeah. I'm okay. illustrating the importance of going through the whole water column and seeing what you absorb. Now I can see stuff accumulating on the outflex, but we can now so, have this analyzed. What is the scientist's point of view? What is coagulating Roundup? the environment. Well, first of all, we don't know what's coagulating. We don't know what the regulant. We haven't but tested, but if, if loosely. So. We, we have to pull some of what's coagulating. And the, the good news is, is we can figure out exactly exactly what it is and what, what reactions are going on. The good news is, stay tuned, folks. <laughs> OK, that's great. Now, what about um, we have a power plant in the Plymouth area that also is leaking. We don't know what, but we would love to know. Would Water Defense be able to help out with that? Uh, we're looking into that right now. We're running some experiments. Oh. You know, lab in Colorado really? um, to see how we can detect and possibly remove. Oh, so like a baseline. Correct. Oh, I see. So you have to do that first. Radiation is radiation. If you simplify it, it's just metals that metals that are not stable and break down. Okay. And what I was told by the wow. experts in radiation is that, with our proven ability from the real world laboratories. That from you know Knapp Creek, Pennsylvania, all the way to Gowanus Canal, we, if we detect arsenic and other metals and remove them, which we do, that we should perform the same way with radiation. But we don't know for certain until we get the control samples done, and we're working on it. Now, there's a lot of outfall pipes in towns. I've made a couple phone calls to a couple of towns to see how many outfall pipes there are. What is an outfall pipe? An outfall pipe has to do with water runoff to septic runoff. To so we're not going to get into all those details. But really briefly, um, would you be able to help testing with, the, with that as well? Yeah, we've done a lot of testing in, in New York on outfall pipes. That's, that's easy to do. And we have uh, Air Force bases, and we have an airport that's leaking in Martha's Vineyard. Just being well, real quick. So basically my point is to let everybody know the wide range of possibilities of things that, that water defense can do for us here on Cape Cod. And you guys are all ready. You're set up. Um, is there anything you need in order to get started? Well, this task is so big and world changing and even starting with Cape Cod that raising funds is the critical funding that's it yeah it's, it's all about the funding so that we can scale this up and thanks to state rep Brian Mantle who pro proposed a line item minute a line item amendment with Cape Cod Community College to help us do this for two hundred thousand dollars we had a meeting at the state house and that it is looking good but Good. And that's Good. just a that's starting a point. That's a help, right? And that's more tied in with the Cape Cod Community College educating the students so they too can learn how to test as well. So, so you heard it live here today, if this is live pre-recorded, that Water Defense needs some funding in order to help us test our land in order to help us and our health and for future generations. You know, I'm the 11th generation born and raised here on the Cape. I'd love to at least think I'm protecting and preserving the land along the way. So whatever little bit that you folks can do, um, please see our websites when you get a chance and give donations. And it'll be really helpful, uh, even if it's just a little bit, because then collectively on a whole, that makes all the difference. Um, are there any other quick thoughts you have? to um, add to this? Um, the the day thought day? that I have is ultimately water defense, we view it as we're accountable to those students in the audience at Barnstable High School, Cape Cod Community College, and the next generation. Our responsibility right now is to arm them with this technology so they know what's in the water and they can solve it once and for all. 
I know you guys gave me hope. That I met them at Cape Cod Community College. They gave a presentation, and I left there feeling hopeful, which wasn't something I have felt since or yet. You know, I mean, it's just amazing to go to all these meetings with the commissions and the senators and the selectmen to try to figure out what to do. And you guys had answers. You guys were, yep, we're here. We want to do this now. I, it, they just need funding. They need our help to, to do this. So hopefully we'll spread the word, get the word out, um, and get the messages going that, you know, there's so many things that are connected to water. Water is a source of life. You know, everything we eat is connected to water. You know, our oysters and around the world, all the streams and stuff, like that's just amazing to me to think about. Yeah, we provided a, a picture of a map that shows the Missouri River where all the Bakken oil, and I, I want to, Cape Cod needs to understand that every spill you read about that's thousands of miles away ends up in what's called the Gulf Stream that flows from the Gulf of Mexico in seven to ten days via the Mississippi River to the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, that's And we're all connected, so. All connected. So that's one way of looking at veins, right? Correct. And then this was your lungs, right? That stimulated you to create this through the human lung. So you're really bringing like, I don't know, different elements together. And it's almost like working with nature, for nature, by nature, ultimately. And you're a scientist. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Who knew? I, again, I acquire knowledge in a systematic way. And my laboratory is the real world with real disasters. That's why I'm a scientist. And uh, I was kind of thrown into this through my own flood oil disaster in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm. And then I just felt a very, very uh, Connection. big responsibility to educate after what I learned in the Gulf of Mexico and BP. And it affects all living creatures, you know? I mean, we have the bees that are dying, as we know, worldwide at mass amounts, you know? And we've got to think about protecting and beyond protecting, actually preserving. You know, there's, I think those two words really have different definitions. And the way I feel is, is you guys have the ability to not just protect, but to preserve. Like, that's, that to me is huge. It's priceless. It becomes priceless. I can't put a number on that. I need to make a very important point, and I'm always learning. And I did not know about Albert Einstein's quote until recently about yes, if the bees disappear, humans disappear in four years. Four years. And this is a very important point. I want to launch a study specifically in North Dakota and some other places about where the hives and the bees are disappearing and test the water. Because what I've really read, Mother Nature's environmental indicator before I was around or invented this was the bees. That's if right. the bees and the hives are disappearing, Mother Nature is telling us that the environment is indicating to us that something is the not right. They're the canaries in the coal mine. That's exactly. What I say. Yeah. yeah. And they're definitely showing signs. Like if we could look at other things in nature, the um, uh, frogs are like asexual and the bats are dying in massive amounts. And the latest thing, I'm sure you've all heard in the news, is, is um, the butterflies. Butterflies, uh, the monarchs, I can't even believe. Uh, last year, they weren't around. The year before, they were. It was like that quick. So again, environmental indicators telling us what's going on. Are we listening? Are we impacting? Are we changing our lives at all? I think every single day, your dollar is your vote. And you can definitely change and actually help the environment just a little bit. And guess what? A little bit here and a little bit there times a large amount will make an impact. So we could do a little bit more every single day, a little bit more, a little more. And before you know it, the individual is actually changing the world on a whole. So that's the way I look at it. You know, instead of thinking about, oh my gosh, what's going on around the world? It's so big and it's too big for me to even fathom. I can't, it's, it, you know, just do what you can do and know wherever your dollar is going matters in nature. And think about who, you know, you're building. Where are you going to locals or are you going to corporations, you know? And again, add your funding to um, places that, that are helpful, that create sustainable systems. I want to add one other point to that, that one gallon of oil contaminates a million gallons of water. Oh my gosh, That's say one, that again? One gallon of oil contaminates a million gallons of water. That's four Whoa. quarts. So people, the cumulative effect of individual responsibility, thinking about what you dumped on your drain, and even olive oil in the water can, can stop the oxygen and disrupt eelgrass 
and, oh, wow. and cause fish kills. Oh my goodness. Did so you hear that? the point is if everybody thinks twice about before they dump something down the drain, that, that, keep, that cumulative major. effect. Yep, and your lawns, inside your house, you know, what kind of shampoo do you use, soap, toothpaste, it all matters in nature. Every choice we make every single day matters in nature. We have so many choices. Where are we going to go eat tonight? <laughs> you know, and think about that kind of stuff because I know living above an aquifer, it's, it's really cool to have our own water. We don't have to have a it's shipped in from the Quabbin, you know, like Boston does. We're like, it's right there below us. But we also need to be more responsible and, and, and actually turn it into action every single day. And then it will last for generations to come. So thank you very much for joining us today, Scott. It's been You're a welcome. pleasure to hang out and chat with you about this. I think what Water Defense has to offer Cape Cod is huge. It's priceless in my mind. I just can't believe how lucky we are and fortunate we are that Cape Cod is a part of your mission statement. So um, please donate when you can. Please tell some friends uh, what's going on here and, and do your part and just be a little bit more, you know, every single day do something different uh, that helps nature and because in the long run that all connects to our drinking water right that's right <laughs> so thanks for being here you're welcome and thanks for having me yeah and keep up the good work thanks you know looking forward to hearing what's going on and how things are evolving with you through time would you come back again in a couple of months and absolutely see what's changed? absolutely okay good <laughs> well thanks again and thanks lctv for uh, actually uh, creating a studio for us and having us here and um, we look forward to doing it again. This is Polka Cape Cod and Laura Kelly signing off and uh, take good care of yourself and remember Cape Cod is a unique environment and should be treated as such. Be well.